Ladies and gentlemen, here we are with another tier list update for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Um, we just had GG Tour. I know usually I show you guys the breakdown and I kind of go through it. Uh, and we talk about power rankings and all that. Uh, but as Duel Links kind of settles back in post Master Duel Exodus, uh, and you know, the amount of tournaments that are still in, you know, kind of start seeing a little bit of fill back up. Um, I think we're going to switch more to just a pure tier list rather than a power ranking overall because there just simply isn't enough tournament data or you'll have tournaments pretty much outside of dle for example uh things like the meta weekly um have like 20 participants you know like gandora for example won meta weekly however when you look at it there was less than there was like 20 ish players and then the most entered deck was gandora so you can't really <laughs> you can't really look at most tournament data and actually extract anything with uh outside of like what you would extract for for Konami locals. So I figured we'll look at the top 32 cuts for the two tournaments that week. This was from the GG Tour. You can see Phantom Knights reigning supreme. However, in this event specifically, Phantom Knights kind of failed to convert to the top cut. They A lot of them failed to even make it to top eight, even though their top 32 cut was really, really good. There was just a high entry rate of Phantom Knights in this tournament. It was like 50-something uh, compared to the rest of the decks. Uh, because if you look at uh, Monday's tournament, you could see that it's a little bit more fair. Uh, I believe this tournament had about 90-ish players. The other one had about 200 or so. Um, but you can see Phantom Knight and Buster Blader kind of neck and neck in that representation. And while Gandora was not represented uh, in the top cut of GG Tour, this was the second day it was released. We saw about six players play the deck. Zero of them converted to top cut. We do see that at least two Gandoras uh, topped this event. I, I, I point out Gandora specifically because it is the new deck kind of on the block, um, and we'll kind of talk about it as we get to it, uh, but you can kind of see that Buster Blader and Phantom Knight are kind of the two decks to kind of uh, go to and play. Uh, Buster Blader did win the $500 GG Tour. Uh, this, I believe it's the second time that a Buster Blader has won in a Phantom Knight specific meta. You can build Buster Blader to be that anti-graveyard strategy, and it is very, very effective in this metagame that a lot of people are calling the Tier 0 Phantom Knight metagame. Not with Buster Blader around, baby. Let's talk about the tier list. I made one of those tier list makers for this. You guys let me know if you enjoy this type of thing. Uh, again, this isn't like an accurate representation of a metagame. It's just my opinion. Um, but it is the more comedic and the more entertaining way of presenting that data. Everyone loves these tier lists. So, hey, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. So let's get into it. First deck, Burning Abyss. I feel like no one talks about Burning Abyss. We had Luke Tyler uh, pop off with the Burning Abyss in this Phantom Knight meta in the last, last GG Tour. Not the one we just had, but the one before that. Uh, able to make it to those grand finals using his Burning Abyss deck. Um, it, it's kind of like a mini bur uh, 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 Phantom Knight in a way. It's it's like discount Phantom Knight where they're, they're using their Dante to mill and then make the Phantom Knight... Uh, ace monsters and, and the rebellion dragon to win the game virgil's really powerful with the seer being able to refund it over and over and over and over however i just feel like maybe the deck is too difficult to play or maybe not enough people are on it or what the case may be but i i, I do feel like it is a part of the metagame that people have to respect especially the farfa banish into the mind of the plana uh, can really screw with a lot of decks and if we ever see a meta shift or even just that one single card that this deck is missing you may see this deck go straight up into that tier one spot however Due to its overall representation and in general play rate, I do have to put it down in the rogue tier, aka the meme tier. Meme tier is just rogue tier. That's what you guys got to remember. Phantom Knights. Oh my god, what is there to say about this deck? This is a graveyard based deck that doesn't care about graveyard based um, floodgates like, like, like the Necro Valley. Necro Valley, a lot of people were like, well, you know, with commandments coming out, Necro Valley is going to be more irrelevant. Phantom Knights are going to fall down in popularity. No, being able to constantly pop 
a card on the board with the break sword and then follow up by banishing and going into um, kind of uh, an OTK every single time is really strong, especially with the trap cards being able to be banished. The turn they are sent, uh, you are able to obtain that OTK faster than any other deck while at the same time being able to use your graveyard as a resource and your opponent doesn't really have a way to stop you from using said resource. Um, Outside of like Shadow and Prison Mirror has been kind of like the, the the one thing I've seen actually work. It is by far the best deck in the game right now, and the entire meta gets warped around it. Whatever decks you play, whatever strategies you play, you are playing them to beat the Phantom Knights, which... Let's talk about it. Abyss Actors has been a deck a lot of people have used as a counter to Phantom Knights, specifically because they're able to use the um, pay cost of Madonna to activate skills like Seal Tombs, uh, to activate you know, sometimes Destiny Draw, but mostly Seal Tombs to be able to lock down the graveyard. Seal Tomb says you cannot special summon nor banish from the graveyard the turn you activate it, and unlike Necro Valley, it is not something Phantom Knights can interact with. Once it goes through, it goes through. You are are not using that graveyard anymore, bud. So it is very, very important for them to get that off. Um, of course, things like Sussy, Sussy Baka, the sassy rookie, being able to be a huge defensive line does set up the metagame a little bit um, because there are certain decks that cannot just simply play through the Abyss Actor, uh, specifically decks that used to be kings of the metagame, like Melodious, for example, which you guys know my opinion on Melodious. Melodious was never really that big t top tier of a deck. It was just something that a lot, that a lot of people played and under the crutch of, of, of score and under the crutch of uh, the Bloom Diva. In reality, as soon as people started side decking and playing around it and actually using their brains, the, 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 the win rate of that deck dropped significantly, right? So... There you go. But those few people that did continue to play the deck and pilot it well and do well with it ultimately failed to the sassy rookie um, kind of counter because a defense mode sassy rookie is just not something melodious or a bunch of other decks can even try to play around. And of course, them being a deck that doesn't even care about their graveyard. They just care about their extra and their main monster zone. They're able to play these anti-graveyard strategies and be one of the better counters to that Phantom Knight strategy, which ultimately gives them a better ranking. Um, Tier 3, because they do also have the representation and the top rate to kind of be considered that, uh, and it's a very consistent strategy. A lot of people will point to the KC Cup win, quote-unquote, as well. Um, best of ones and KC Cup and stuff like that is, is one thing, but there's always that one random deck that'll win win KC Cup, right? Luna Lights winning KC Cup and all that stuff. I don't really think KC Cup's a good indicator of how good a deck is, Um Unless you're like super into the ranked mode and the ranked mode is irrelevant because even KC Cup itself feeds into KCGT and then KCGT is a, 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 a three deck system. So really ranked ultimately amounts to nothing. <laughs> and, and I would not I personally would not bring Abyss Actors if I had to pick three decks and go into worlds. Abyss Actors would not be one of my three decks, me personally. But maybe it is for you. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Ritual Beast, this is a very, very heavy back row grind meta. It is a very slow meta uh, compared to what Duel Links is used to with Harpy Ladies coming down and popping, you know, all the cards. This is usually what happens. Um, and because the game has slowed down so much, decks like the uh, Ritual Beast and other slow decks are able to still get good top rates, uh, top conversion rates from their entry rates. Um, however, ultimately, the the there's too many attacks from Phantom Knights. Uh, there is, you know, the Phantom Knights are also pretty much playing triple cosmic and triple MST. So if if you're entire strategy is I'm going to play my back row until uh, we enter the zone, the ritual be zone to try and uh, stop my opponent from playing the game. Uh, it's just not going to work. Unfortunately, it, this, it, it is a nice meta because it is slow and it's a grind game. But as more and more people start packing that back row removal, you're going to see decks like ritual beast play, but not ultimately win, putting them in the meme tier. Buster Blader. Buster Blader is the best counter to Phantom Knight. If you're tired of losing to Phantom Knight, you play Buster Blader. Uh, the only, the biggest downside to Buster Blader, 
well, <laughs> the the real biggest downside of the Buster Blader, uh, rather the the the, bit, the 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 one that everyone talks about is how expensive this goddamn deck is. Holy shit! If there is ever a deck to point to to say this is the problem with the Dual Link system of selling me cards, it is Buster Blader, man. Too many. It's like two main boxes and a mini box, I think, which is insane in terms of trying to build this thing just to counter the one deck that's still better than you, technically, because they have better matchups against the other decks in the game. <laughs> I mean, how is that fair, Konami? Come on, man. Anyway, Buster Blader, they have a quick play, searchable quick play spell that banishes cards from the graveyard, which is extremely powerful against Phantom Knights because they need to use their cards in the graveyard to OTK you or even just set up their plays uh, for follow-up. And if Buster Blader comes out and just banishes those cards, they are unable to do so. The problem is if you play specifically those cards, you'll probably lose to other decks in the metagame that aren't as reliant on their uh, graveyard. Again, we talked about Abyss Actors not really giving a shit about their graveyard getting banished so you have to keep that in mind when playing this deck but because of just the raw number of phantom knights again there was like 200 some odd players uh in the gg tour 50 almost 60 of them were phantom knights so if you locked in with buster blader which is what skillshot did you're, you're gonna have an easy time to top cut and if they make it to top cut you're gonna have an easy time uh getting it past there especially in a bo3 where you have a side deck and you can side in uh better cards against other matchups easily in my opinion the tier two deck of this format and the second best deck in my opinion harpy ladies we still see a lot of people playing harpy ladies I think Harpy Lady is a massive meme. I think that's just ultimately what it comes down to. We can check the image slideshow again. You can see where's Harpy, where's Harpy, where's Harpy. There's one Harpy Lady in the entire top cut on Monday. That's really, really not good, especially compared to how many enter. Because you still get like a ton of people entering with them. And then if we check the GG tour, you can see that again, one Harpy Lady. I think with Harpy, the reason I'm like, she's even on here. She, I mean, she's easily a meme. She's not like, I don't even know why we're still talking. The, the only reason is just literally people play her and people play her because that's all they have. Because Yuto came out when Master Duel was releasing. People didn't get Yuto. Yuto hasn't come back yet. So not anyone can just log into the game and go purchase um, uh, Phantom Knight. Buster Blader is way too expensive. And then like Abyss Actor is your only realistic choice uh, in terms of, of a returning player trying to get in to, um, into Duel Links like competitive. And that's just not going to really take you anywhere, man. So I feel like a lot of people play Harpy Ladies. You see crazy things like 17 enter, one top, 20 enter, one top, two top, zero tops. Uh, Harpy Lady... It, it, it's just people coming back to the game and this is the only competitive deck they have. So they try to play it. This deck is not competitive. This deck is not part of the tier list. If anyone tells you Harpy Lady is part of the metagame, they are lying to you. They, they are dead wrong. The only way they're part of the game is because people play it because they have nothing else because of the shitty dual link system of selling you cards. If we had the option to have any card in the game without actually having to pay as much money for it, if it was you know, 10% of the actual cost to buy cards, no one in their right mind would be playing Harpy Lady right now. It is purely a financial decision that people play that. <laughs> Get fucked, Harpies. Gandora, last deck we're going to talk about. New deck from the box. A lot of people are overhyping it. Some people are underhyping it. Where does this deck kind of land? Again, we talked about a lot of people bring up the Meta Weekly win. I don't know why that Meta Weekly had like 20, 21, 22, 23 players. I don't remember how much it was. It was less than 30. Um, and the most entered deck was Gandora. And I think there was only like two Phantom Knights in the entire tournament. It was definitely one more one of those tournaments where people just wanted to play a new deck and not play what is actually the best deck. I believe the two tournaments that happened afterwards, GG Tour and the Battle Phase Monday, are more indicative of the deck's power level. And I got to say, in my limited time seeing it play, I'm very curious to see where it goes. As of right now, I'm placing it in tier three i think that is good enough uh, it tops around the same rate of abyss actors compared to how many enter um and i can see a further optimized strategy i can actually see something that might happen it's not like ddd or necros where i see the deck and i'm like yeah i don't i don't think that's what's gonna you know i just don't think that deck's good you know i i saw in action 
the power of the white princess, the new hand trap, even if everything else fails, that card alone will be something that you'll see in the metagame of Duel Links, I believe. It's basically wall of D for one turn out of your hand, which is really, really, really powerful. You can use it whenever the hell you want, so that's pretty cool. Um, you don't have to wait on attack declaration or anything like that. Um, this deck focuses on pretty much stalling, right, with hand traps, uh, with kiteroid, and then on the third activation of your skill, which is three turns, uh, you would drop a Levianir, Chaos Dragon Levianir, um, to try and clear out your opponent's back row, and then you bring out your Gandora to do non-targeting, uh, banish from the graveyards and the monsters, and, and well, all cards, including back row as well. So as long as that Gandora can get out there and use his effect, that's why Levianir getting out there is super important to clear the way for it. Um, you will have guaranteed OTK unless your opponent specifically plays a hand trap. And because this deck isn't like the tier one deck, I don't think a lot of people are going to change their deck list to include Sphere Kribo and Kiteroids. And no other deck really plays Kiteroid other than like, you know, Magnets and... You know, not a, there's not a, lot, a whole lot of magnets right now in, in in competitive Duel Links. So I think because it's kind of the new unknown deck, it's going to steal a lot of wins. But I think ultimately, if the meta ever shifts when more hand traps are played, um, or just in general, if people just start citing hand traps, whenever you stop that Gandora play, it really does feel like that's it. They have nothing else. But the deck is still new. People are still optimizing and putting in. It is one of those card decks that you play at 30 cards. So maybe people start playing you know you know if people play hand traps people who play anti-hand traps etc etc i do think it's a part of the metagame um because it is if you just ignore it it is a very powerful strategy that will absolutely tear you a new one um i would just like to see where it goes because non-targeting banish on everything is very very strong it's it's literally just hand traps that stop you especially if that levy in your effect goes off and destroys any back row that you may have had to potentially stop the gandor or even if you did stop the levy in with like a fiendish chain was that your only fiendish chain and now the gandor comes out and boom you still lose i don't know you guys let me know i don't know um a whole lot about this deck because i've only seen two tournaments with it but so far i think it's been doing pretty damn interesting that's going to be it from me, boys. Do you agree with my tier list? Do you disagree with my tier list? You let me know down in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Again, these are all just my personal opinions. I do wish we could do power rankings again, but even with the tournaments coming back slowly into Duel Links, if you just look at the how many people enter said tournaments, they're just not a whole lot, and I don't think there's a whole lot of data that you can grab uh, from the tournament scene. It is what it is. Hopefully... Um, as more and more people come back into the game uh, or discover the game for the first time, uh, and then hopefully Konami makes the game better, make it cost less. So I'm, I listen, Konami, I'll play the game again if you make it cost like 80% less. I will be there and I will play it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, if you do that, boom, we will have uh, power rankings again. Till next time, boys. Take it easy. Peace out.